Because he's become less and less fashionable, he's become more and more interesting. I mean, how many other journalists, no matter how great, invented at least one and possibly sort of two forms of journalism? India needs uh, a thousand synapses. In 1993, a freelance reporter from Bombay convinced the Times of India newspaper to let him write a series about the people who live in India's 10 poorest communities. India was in the midst of sweeping economic reforms. Foreign investors were being courted, while social programs were being cut. The news media was chock full of business news and stock market analysis. For 18 months, that reporter lived with and wrote about some of the poorest people on earth. He revealed an India many Indians didn't know existed, and he forced the media to pay attention to what was happening outside the business districts. He dispelled myths and exposed stereotypes. I'm not taking too much of the plowing pictures because that is the most common representation of the countryside. Man and plow, I'm sick of it. It's a picture, it makes a nice picture and all that. And it gives this very idyllic, rural, sajan kind of story. But it's not the real. It's, it's, it conceals more than it shows. So what we are looking for is what she does. The reporter is Palagumi Sainath. His project led to a book, Everybody Loves a Good Drought, was its title. It pushed Bill Gates from the top of the Indian bestsellers list. I've often been described as arrogant. I won't contest that uh, charge at all. My reply is that if I look at what people are doing in journalism, if I look at what the great leaders of journalism are doing everywhere, when you look at the kind of crap they churn out day in, day out, it's impossible not to be arrogant. After a while, it leads to illusions because, I mean, the, the stuff that mainstream journalism is now made of is so bad, content-wise, is so ridiculous, that you can't help feeling superior. 